no shame in my name. Hi guys, you are now listening to episode 94 of the No Shame in My Name podcast. I'm your host, Juliana, and today we're joined by a special guest. Yay! Yes. <laughs> 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 um, hi guys, I am Zainab. Um, I do go by Zain Muda. Okay, thank you. Welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having me. How have you been? I have been good. I've been working a lot on my brands, work in general, and just put my head down. I always try and think of icebreaker questions before, but I literally... Do you know what? Let's actually pick up from the the wine. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. If let let me pick a country. But why why wine? Can you explain your fascination with wine? Do you know what it is? I love the taste of it. It's you know for some people music brings in peace. Mm-hmm. For some people makeup brings in peace. For me, it's wine as well as music mm-hmm. and other things that I love doing. Wine. It, there's something so sultry and peaceful about it because it's the kind of drink where you you pour yourself a glass you're in your own zone and you're doing your own thing so wine what is it going to be your question i was going to say um if what nigerians if... were to make a red wine what would it be called um um Oluwa wine <laughs> not Oluwa wine Oma wine Oma wine Oma wine babe Oma wine babe i like that Oma wine babe, Oma wine, babe. Oma wine, babe. Oma wine babe 2023 <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. You kids, what would your Nigerian wine be called? It would be called Oloju Elegba. Was that is that a place in that in Lagos? I think so. Oh, okay. It would be called Oloju Elegba wine, two thousand and twenty-three. I'm gonna go to the first question which I ask all my guests, which is what name are you bringing to the podcast today and why? Yeah, um so I'm gonna be bringing Ashabi mm-hmm. to the podcast because this is the name that I not recently, but very recent. How can I say not recently, but very recently? <laughs> that I recently um, found out what the meaning was because I was just curious. So I asked my mum, and she said that it means um, one in a million. The child, the baby that was picked to be born. Sha, to share something in Yoruba is um, to pick something, and then B is give birth. So Ashabi is the one who was chosen for birth. Okay. Do you know why your mum or why his parents? gave you this um i think it's because i'm definitely one in a million i think from young i've always just been so in my own life in my own bubble doing whatever i wanted to do and i think um they definitely saw that in me when mm-hmm. i was born yeah and is your mum uh, your parents your family people do they know you as ashabi or zainab or do they uh, when whenever they want to be nice I shall be me, I shall be, I shall be, I shall be. And then when they're angry, sign up, eh! <laughs> and I'm like, okay. Do you know what? 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 Do I I used to call myself a motivational speaker and Mm -hmm. I used to call myself, um, I still am in essence a woman empowerment advocate, but I had to reword that and and look at it from a different perspective. Ashabi's journey is like like a mini series of my life and each stage that I'm at and what I'm doing and just showing the crazy aspects of who I am and stuff Mm -hmm. like that. Why did you decide to use your name? Was your name like a core part of the thing becoming yeah yeah i think for me i love the meaning of zainab zainab means um the father's adornment or a fragrant flower it's a muslim name a very 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 popular muslim name um and i love that name but then when i had my first instagram account it was called zay muda Mm -hmm. that was what i went by all the time and then it got hacked and then i just kind of wanted to start afresh um i first called a new account something along the lines of zay muda maybe with two A's or something, so I could keep that identity. And then I was like, hang on. Where did your love, or where did your interest in women empowerment, beauty and encouragement, where did that come from? Um, So it all started, um, I think almost seven years ago now, 
because I went to an all-girls secondary school and I remember one day I was in the toilet and there were these two younger girls in the toilet and they were looking at themselves in the mirror and one of them was like, oh, look at my belly, I'm so fat, I can't wait until I'm older, I'm going to get lipo, da 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 It was something along those lines and then the other one was like, no, you're not, look at my da 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 And I was just washing my hands, like just listening to the conversation and I was like, do we have some sort of club in the school where us girls can go to if we feel rubbish? So I, I remember that whole week, I went around the school asking the teachers, the head of years, I was like, do we have anything of some sort of like confident space? And everyone was like, no. So, <laughs> so um, yeah, so I decided to start a club. Um, I called it Confidence Club. And it was, the aim was just to uplift um, the confidence and self-esteem of the girls in the school, as well as myself. And then I decided when I finished um, secondary school, I would bring it into university as a society. Honestly, I just think it's one of the most important things ever. Because for me personally, finding where I belong, finding my identity, confidence has always been such a great area because of everything in my life that I've been through. But also the stories and experiences I've heard from my friends and mm. from other um, young girls. And I was like, no, I need to... I need to do something about this, mm -hmm. not just for myself, but for anyone else out there who can relate and who can feel inspired. So. How did you, what kind of tools did you use to, or what kind of tools did you <coughs> use to instill confidence in yourself? There's two. Mm -hmm. There's two very important things that I've done. And these are the two things that honestly changed my life forever. And that was journaling and dancing. Mm -hmm. Journaling, because it was a space for me to offload my emotions because I used to be an overthinker. My brain would go at a million miles per hour. I remember my hands would just type, 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 type. I'd be spelling stuff wrong. I'd be, it wasn't even <laughs> If I go back to those notes, like it was a mess. So I would like type, type, type. But now I've seen the change in how easy I, I journal and how almost kind of like thought out they are. Mm -hmm. So when I say dancing, I don't mean like you have to go out and find a salsa class or you have to go and find a hip hop class and join. I mean putting on music that makes you feel good and moving your body. I remember this started because I was on TikTok one day and there was this woman who had a condition where she couldn't move her, um, her mobility was really restricted from the top down. And I remember I was just casually always keeping up with, like I would always see her post on my TikTok. I would click on her page and like follow, just casually follow. And I remember there was a video I came across a couple months later and she was she had movement. And I was like, okay, that's so sick. I was like, that's so amazing. Now, the woman, she does these um side-by-side -side duets with Shakira where she like copies her um, waist movements and some of her choreogra uh, choreography. When I tell you it's the most beautiful thing ever, the transition just by moving her body. And I think her hashtag is something like, move to heal or something like that or like movement is healing or something <clears throat> and um ever since that day i was like yeah i was like there's power in moving your body there's power in feeling free with yourself i remember i used to always walk like this subconsciously i wouldn't even know my shoulders are always tense always mm -hmm. and it's not until i would realize and then i'd be like oh, okay put them down mm -hmm. now because there's so much trauma trapped in our body. And the best way that you're able to get rid of that is through movement. Some people use gym. My sister's a gym babe. She uses gym to release all that, that tension. Um, I have friends who, yeah, my smiley sister. Um, a lot of people um, do different things. I just dance. The whole reason why I do what I do now is because there was a point where I just didn't understand what society was telling me. And because of that confusion, that was where a lot of my lack of confidence stemmed from. Because um, I grew up in Ireland for 12 years. Jeez. Yeah, yeah top of the morning too. Yeah. Coming here to the UK, honestly, I was confused. And that confusion caused a lack of understanding of who I am. And because I didn't know who I was, I couldn't step into a room with confidence because I didn't know what I was bringing to the room. I didn't know the aura I was carrying. For me, it's always been about expression. That's why I say dancing and journaling, anything where you can get what's in here 
out into the world. Fashion is one of those ways that you can do that as well. And also makeup. They're just ways of expressing yourself and showing to the world who you are in a, in a bit more of an artistic form. With, and what's my other question, with beauty, do you have any um, things that you follow when you're doing your makeup? Listen, I say do what do what looks right to you. It's okay. Do what looks right to you and um, your face. So, <laughs> I recently um, went viral on TikTok because of how I how bright my under eyes are. Mm -hmm. When I tell you the hate, it was ridiculous. Like, and it went over the span of a couple months. Um, really? The hate, yeah, it was ridiculous. I think it's on like eight hundred and something thousand views from TikTok. Yeah, yeah. and. Stupid amount of comments, ridiculous. How do you manage that? Actually? I don't. I don't. Honestly, I don't read the comments. Mm -hmm. I'm not someone who's really too fave by people online, and even people in in, in real life. Mm -hmm. Again, I told you, I'm in my own matrix, ninety nine percent of the time. <laughs> I'm in my own world, ninety nine percent of the time. If you don't have the key, you're not getting in. Comments don't have the key. People don't have the key. You're not getting in. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I would say, do what you want to do do what makes you feel good even if it's you know um even if you're the type of girls where it's concealer lashes and lip gloss that's me today mm -hmm. the time you wear concealer and i'm i'm on my way and i don't think that makeup is um i don't think it should be something that completely changes you as a person mm -hmm. or it shouldn't be something that you have to leave your house, you have to leave your house. Because I used to be like that as well. I remember in, six, in secondary school, every single day without fail, I would wear makeup. Every, there was not one day. <laughs> there was not one day, every single day. When I didn't come in with makeup, I would lit, I would come into school um, early. I'd be at the back of the class. I would leave school early because no one can see me. Mm -hmm. That's how I felt like then. You're putting on makeup for me to remember. You're not changing your face, you're enhancing what it is that's there. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, is it Ashabi or Ashabi? Ashabi. 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 Don't shine Naira. <laughs> don't shine pounds. Don't shine yen. <laughs> Do you speak Yoruba? Uh, not that well. Okay. You'd be surprised actually, because when I when I start to talk, it's almost like, oh my god, she's so fluent. No, I'm not. Really? really? I'd say like 30, 40 percent, but mm -hmm. I can understand it 100 percent. Um, in terms of like expression through um, language, how important do you think it is for traditions to be carried through like all, all traditions? So important. I mean, I would love to be more immersed in Yoruba. I would love. I'm learning. Um, how how are you learning to speak Yoruba? Is it just by because with me, I'm like I speak to my parents. I'm like, can you just speak for me and hit both? Oh, I love yeah. that because you're taking initiative, isn't it? But we just end up speaking English. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you get fed up. And yeah. You're like, you know what? Just pass me the banana, Jerry. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> just so. make me Gary. <laughs> <laughs> so how are you learning? And do you have any tips for people who want to um, get back in touch with their native tongues? Yeah. Um, I would say, because for me, my parents always spoke it in the house, so I was one of those kids who grew up listening to it. But I would say, like, like what you're doing, taking mm -hmm. the initiative to be like, Mum, Dad, speak to me in, in, in your language. I want to respond back to you. Mm -hmm. And what I also do as well is sometimes I'll be like, Mum, how do you say da 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 da, -da in Yoruba? She'll say it to me, and I'll repeat it, register it. Mm -hmm. Or um, if they're talking to me and there's a word that I don't understand but I don't know what it means, I'll be like, oh, what does that mean? And then they go into it and explain. So mm -hmm. it's a lot of taking initiative, asking and being very like, mum, speak to me, Yoruba. Mum, what does this word mean? Mum, mm -hmm. dad, speak, you know, mm -hmm. because a lot of my friends have actually said that the reason why they don't really understand their language is because their parents always spoke some English. Um, and that's kind of what you want to avoid. I tried YouTube as well. I just went downstairs and I was like, Mom, this woman's trying to say something. What's she trying to say? <laughs> <laughs> <She's so funny. laughs> okay, wow. I think we're coming towards the end. But like um, the questions that I've been asking previous guests, if you had one statement to make about your name or your name in general, what would you say? 
I would say that you are one in a million. Your name was is attached to you for a reason.